live from London, England. It's the Cube covering .next Conference Europe 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Hi, and welcome to the Excel Center in London, England, where 3,500 customers, partners, and employees of Nutanix have gathered for the annual European show of Nutanix.next 2018. I'm Stu Miniman, my co-host for two days of wall-to-wall -wall exclusive coverage from theCUBE is Yoop Piskar, our first European co-host. Uh, Yoop, uh, I first met you two years ago at the Nutanix show in Vienna. Uh, last year was in Nice, uh, we're now in London, and uh, now, now uh, you're not just a guest, but you're a host, so thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. So, you know, it was awesome. You know, three years ago I was a customer then I transitioned into you know, a tech champion as well. Um, so getting to know the technology and the people behind Nutanix. And I'm here as a, as a co-host, you know, looking at Nutanix as a company. Yeah, well, you really appreciate you joining us. Give us, first of all, so, some more credibility in the European space. Um, and, and also, we always love to get the, the practitioner viewpoint. So you've been a customer, uh, you, you're, you're part of the, uh, I believe it's the NTC uh, pro yeah, program right. uh, that, that Nutanix has, so you understand the technology. We're going to get to talk to some of the customers, some of those executives, uh, and the like. Uh, so, uh, you know, looking forward to ha having you sit with me and, and dig into it, including a first on the cube, uh, you, you're going to do uh, one interview in your native tongue of Dutch. Yes, oh yeah, it's going to be completely in Netherlands, so completely Dutch, and I'm looking forward to that. All right, so uh, Dheeraj Pandey was on, uh, on stage this morning, uh, and you know, Dheeraj, uh, you know, masterful, gives quite a good keynote, um, talking about how Nutanix is now nine years old. Um, and so therefore, he says, still very young when you look at most of the technology companies out there, but they've, they've come a long way. Uh, I've watched Nutanix since the very early days, um, and you know, still kind of blows my mind some of the companies I've watched in their ascendancy. I remember VMware back when they were about 100 people, Nutanix I met when they were about 30, people, uh, Pernix Data <laughs> that uh, uh, Nutanix bought, uh, you know, Satyam, who we're going to have on later today, you know, introduced me to the company when it was, you know, three people and a dog. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, and Nutanix now, uh, uh, you know, over, I think, 3,000, 3,500 people uh, announced last night their Q1 2019 earnings uh, and just this, some of the quick speeds and feeds, $313 million of revenue, that is up 14% year over year for the quarter, up 3% quarter over quarter from the previous quarter. Um, strong growth in a lot of the financials, really moving uh, strongly along their path uh, to be software, uh, it, which is 51% of billings were from uh, the software and expect to reach somewhere between 70 and 75% in the next four to six quarters. So aggressively uh, meeting that and you know, publicly traded company, you kind of look at it and say, well, this Nutanix has a $7 billion uh, market cap uh, before the uh, market opens today. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what the market thinks uh, of their earnings. Earnings, but uh, you know what, what? What's just at the at, at a high level? You, uh, as I said, you you've you've been watching Nutanix for a while. Also, what, what's your take on the company? So you know, I I met them a couple of years ago as well. Like I, I think they were a hundred people big back then. Um, I learned from them in from a technology perspective. So I just got to know the technology, got to know why they were building this startup, building this technology, and this was back in the day when it was basically a VDI product. Yeah. Um, and it was hardware, it was a thin layer of software, and they kept building that out, and building it out, and building it out. So at some point I became a customer of them, um, when you know, their appliances were becoming so mature that I actually saw the advantages that they were touting. Um, so you know, ease of management, um, you know, one click for everything, and that made you know, such a difference in the world back then that I, you know, it's just so good to see them growing and growing from you know, the VDI product it was at some point, uh, all of, you know, to where it is now. You know, this is not a startup anymore. This is a big company with a portfolio that's becoming, you know, very broad, very deep as well. Um, so seeing them grow this quickly has been, um, you know, pretty much amazing to see. I haven't seen a company go that fast in a long time. Yeah. Well, it, it that's one of the things that really. Uh, if you, if you look at where we are in technology today, things move fast. Uh, so uh, the, the rest of the team for theCUBE is at Amazon reInvent, and the amount of announcements uh, coming out of them is just staggering. Um, but we're, we're going to talk here about Nutanix. Actually, the amount of announcements that Nutanix had, uh, considering, as you said, they started out, really you think of that, uh, that, that, that 
thin layer um, to, to, to really uh, you know, simplify IT. Uh, Dheeraj in the keynote uh, talked about we want to achieve invisible together. Uh, was the, the line that he used, um, and simplifying things are really tough. That, that's really what characterized uh, the wave of hyperconverged infrastructure in my mind, when I talked to users why they bought it, it was simplifying it. It was not, you know, when you think back to VMware, VMware was real easy. It was, oh, I'm going to consolidate, I'm going to get higher utilization, and there was a clear cost savings. Yeah. Well, today, this hyperconverge is, if you look at, building it one way versus buying it this other way, you know, the, the actual raw dollars was not that you know, immediately compelling. It is the operational simplicity, and therefore I can allow, uh, in, in many ways I say IT can now say yes to the business and focus on things that add value to the business, move up the stack. A line that I've used at a few of these Nutanix shows is, First, I want to modernize my platform, and then I can do things like modernize my application, modernize all my operations around that. Uh, so it, it, it was uh, a nice catalyst uh, to help customers along their journey for digital transformation. Is, is that what you've seen? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So looking at my, my own experience, um, you know, I've seen it so clearly that simplifying that infrastructure layer um, you know, five, six years ago, that was the driver for us to move there. And you know, I've it, it's become so much more than just a simplification, right? It's become a story of freeing up time from the IT ops personnel to do other stuff. Just like you said, you know, saying yes to the business, because infrastructure used to be hard. It used to be difficult. You needed to spend a lot of time on it. And now it's really, you know, it's so easy. It's become a commodity. You either get it from the cloud, you get it from Nutanix or VMware or whoever. Um, and that frees up time for the IT ops personnel to do you know, value add stuff on top of it. And I kind of see Nutanix going along that same route. You know, they focused on the infrastructure part. They're still an infrastructure company, I think. Um, but they're you know, expanding into that whole journey the customer's going through as well. Uh, so I, I think we're going to hear a lot more about the hybrid strategy, about cloud, about hybrid cloud, about how to manage that instead of just the infrastructure stuff. Yeah, you bring a good point that that customer journey is definitely one that they talked about. And let, let, let's talk about the way you look at the Nutanix portfolio now. The way that Nutanix has framed it is they gave, uh, the, it was the customer journey of crawl, walk, run. So yeah. first, we have core, which really is the, the primary product we've been thinking about. It's what you know the vast majority of Nutanix customers use. It's, it's HCI, uh, it's Prism, it's those pieces to manage uh, you know, that, that, that core piece. Then we add on top of that is Essentials, which really looked at some of the expansion areas. Uh, Files is one that they uh, you know, launched as an announcement about two years ago, I believe it was. Uh, that They have Blocks now, which is now a you know, highly scalable object uh, model there. And uh, there's Prism Pro, so a bunch of pieces to add on and go beyond the core, and, and, and then they have Enterprise, um, which is Zyclouds, kind of the branding that they have along these, um, but uh, Leap is DR as a service, uh, they've got uh, Frame, which is desktop as a service, uh, they've got Era, and they've got a whole lot of other software solutions out there uh, that make up this whole portfolio. Um, I wouldn't say that it was simple. Uh, it took me two or three times of hearing it before it started to crystallize, but if you look at it from, from that customer lens, the customer doesn't need to worry about where these buckets have. It's the, you know, I, I, I'm buying core stuff, uh, I'm probably growing to essentials, and then there's areas where, uh, you know, enterprise will make sense, and it's, a, it's a likely going to be a different go-to-market uh, and, and different buying motion. Uh, take something like Frame, who we're going to, uh, you know, ha have on the program today. Uh, Frame today is not, you know, attached to the, you know, Nutanix, uh, you know, appliance itself. It, it, it was born in the cloud, and yeah. many of the enterprise solutions are born in the cloud, multi-cloud, uh, so uh, what's, what, what's your take on how they're uh, kind of splitting up and discussing the portfolio? So, uh, just like you said, you know, it took me a while to figure out what that whole portfolio was, you know, the, the core essentials, enterprise stuff, but I do think, you know, looking at it from a customer perspective, it does make sense, right? So, they started out simplifying the core infrastructure, now they're simplifying the essentials in the data center as well, like files, like micro-segmentation, like monitoring, those are you know, topics that customers still spend a lot of time on, but they don't necessarily want to. They want to have something that is you know, readily off the shelf, that's easy to use, easy to, um, to expand upon. Um, so I do see Essentials as a good you know, expansion of that messaging they have been uh, uh, 
giving for you know quite a number of years already, um, simplifying what is in the data center already, and then the stretch into the cloud, in, into the hybrid cloud, um, delivering services that are still so difficult to do yourself. Like take VDI for example, that's still difficult, right? Standing up an entire environment, managing it, you have to have you know really specialized people to do that for you, to do the design. Um, and being able to get that directly from the cloud makes it so much easier. Yeah. So I do, you know, I do agree with the um, the segmentation into the three bi big buckets, and I do think you know customers are going to re respond positively to it. Uh, all right. So you brought up a term hybrid cloud that I really didn't feel that we heard a lot about uh, in the keynote this morning. Is an area I, I, I want to kind of poke and understand a little bit more when I hear from Nutanix. I was talking to one customer uh, in prep for this, and he said, you know, a year ago, in the last couple of times, we're hearing a lot about Google. Um, and, you know, had Diane Green on the stage at the, I believe it was the DC show. Um, I didn't see Google here. I know there is updates as to where the, the Google relationship are, are, are going. Um, they did mention uh, Kubernetes, uh, the, the, the Kubernetes offering that Nutanix has is called Carbon. Mm -hmm. I actually expect to see not only will we have Nutanix on the program here to talk about it, uh, but at the Kubernetes show KubeCon in Seattle in two weeks, you know, Nutanix is one of the sponsors that we'll have uh, on the program there. Um, but other than Kubernetes and how that fits into the cloud native discussion, I haven't heard a good cohesive message as to how Nutanix does hybrid. They talk about how Nutanix lives in a lot of environments and many of their products live in multi-cloud. Um, and, and there's some nuance there. I, I think VMware has a you know, nice clear message on hybrid. Um, Microsoft, of course, ha and of course VMware is the partnership with Amazon is really well, the, 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 the core of what they're doing there. They, they're doing more cloud native in Kubernetes. They bought FDO, uh, there are things going on there. Uh, Amazon is talking a lot more about hybrid. We'll see if they actually use the term hybrid um, when they, they talk about it. Um, but um, Nutanix's messaging, uh, you know, when I, I had, we're going to have Deeraj on uh, today. Uh, he says, you know, <laughs> Azure Stack gets a lot of press, but there's not a lot of people using it. VMware on AWS gets a lot of press, but once again, not a lot of companies using it yet. And while I agree, customers actually feel comforted by the message that they understand, how do I get from where I am today to where I need to go? And of course, I'm not saying that everybody goes 100% public cloud. You know, the hybrid multi-cloud world kind of looks like where we'll be for the next five to 10 years at least, and Edge puts a whole another you know, spin on things, but, um, yeah, what, what, what do you want to hear from Nutanix? What, 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 is, what is hybrid, you know, customers might not care about hybrid, but the, the message about where they're going with cloud is I think what they want clarity on. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, I think Nutanix doesn't call it hybrid, they're calling it hyper-converged cloud, you know, which makes sense from their historical background. And I do think that Nutanix has ways to go in, you know, developing their own hybrid cloud story, you know, making a management layer on top of it, like VMware's done, like Microsoft's doing. Um, so I do think you know, uh, Nutanix is on the, only on the beginning of this journey for themselves. Um, but you're already seeing you know, the, the small acquisitions they're doing or the small steps they're taking. Like you know, uh, acquiring Frame is, is one of those you know, unexpected uh, things for me, right? I, I would never have thought Nutanix would you know, go that direction. So I do think Nutanix is, is taking small steps in the right direction. But like you said, their story isn't complete yet. It's not a story that customers can buy into fully just now. Um, so they uh, they do still need a little bit of time for that. Yeah, well, you really appreciate you helping us uh, break down this. Uh, we've got two days of full coverage, so much to go in. As you said, right, M&A in the space, it's a software world. Picking up pieces are easy. Um, you know, heck, one of the underlying rumors I've heard for the last couple of years is, you know, will someone take Nutanix off the table? Um, not something I expect them to, do, you know, uh, specifically direct, but at a $7 billion market cap, that would be a large acquisition. It but would. we have seen a few of those in the last couple of years. So, for you, Piscar, I'm Stu Miniman. Stay with us for two days wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Thecube.net, of course, is where to see all of the live and on-demand content. Uh, thanks so much for watching The Cube. <laughs>